Hi everyone, Frank Spangler here again with our continuing series on how to take better photos and video. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about lenses. And uh, this is something I really probably should have mentioned in our first lesson, in our last lesson, is how to attach the lens uh, to the body of the camera. That's one of the first things you have to do, right, is to be able to attach the lens to the camera. And uh, yet, in a way, I'm glad we missed that uh, in our first lesson because it gives us an opportunity to share some basic concepts about lenses, how to take good care of them, how to change lenses on the body of the camera. Uh, many of you may already know how to do this, of course, but uh, I know that there will be a number of people that are watching this series that may be working with a DSLR camera for the first time and may have never needed to change lenses before. And uh, so you may find this helpful. All right, uh, so you are opened up your box and uh, the camera body probably came something like this with a protective cover over the lens opening here. And uh, so what we need to do is take this off and I should mention that you really should do this in a clean environment where there's no wind or uh, dust or debris that might get into the opening of the camera here because this area in here is quite sensitive to dust and debris and uh, we want to be careful to always keep this area clean. So whenever you're attaching a lens or changing lenses, I always recommend maybe just stepping into a, a building that you can be out of the wind to do that. If you do happen to be out in the field or you know you're going to be out in the field and have uh, no ability to get inside to change lenses, uh, what some people will do is um, carry a little cloth bag in their camera bag so that they can perform this operation uh, with their hands inside of a cloth bag to protect uh, all of this sensitive equipment uh, from the wind and dust and debris. So we take this off and uh, take hold of our lens here. We'll notice that there's another protective cap. Oh, I should have mentioned, don't lose this. Uh, don't discard this uh, protective cap because there may be times when you want to transport the camera separate from your lenses, your camera body. And so you'll always want to have that uh, ready to pop back on there to protect the camera again. And uh, so don't discard that. And the same goes for the bottom cover of your lenses. Don't discard this because if you do have other lenses that you want to swap out um, and work with different types of lenses, then whenever you're storing this in your camera bag, of course, you want to be able to put that uh, protective cap back on the lens. So how do we attach the lens? Well, if you turn the lens around, you'll notice that there's a little white uh, square here that's kind of poking up a little bit. What we want to do is line that white square up with the white mark that's on the ring uh, of the body itself, the outside ring. And so if we line that up and pop it in and then turn it clockwise until you hear it click. And once it clicks, it's going to be insecure. You'll notice that if you try and move it back and forth, it's locked in there and it's going to be fine. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have access to other lenses, uh, for example, this uh, L series lens from Canon, you'll notice has a red ring about it. This, this um, signifies that it is a more professional lens and more expensive lens. And uh, uh, because of the red ring, we now want to look for a red dot on the lens itself and line it up to the red dot that's on the outer ring of the camera. And then once that's lined in, Simply turn it clockwise again until it clicks into place and it's locked in. So depending on the type of lens that you're uh, mounting to the camera, uh, you'll, e you'll look for either the red dot or the uh, white square. Now, what's the big deal with all of the lenses? Uh, a lot of people prior to coming to a DSLR camera have worked with um, a kind of a pocket camera perhaps, had no... Um, interchangeable lens system or maybe they've just been working with their smartphone uh, and uh, 
now are wondering, well, why should I have all of these different types of lenses? Well, actually, if you're just starting out, it's not necessary to have uh, a nice series of lenses like these. Um, you can do a lot with the kit lens that comes with the 90D camera. Um, I've been playing with, with it now for the last couple of weeks out in the field as I prepare for these lessons. And I have to say, I'm, I'm really pretty impressed. Usually when we talk about the kit lens that comes with the uh, bodies as they're sold in the stores, it's often underwhelming. But uh, this lens is actually pretty good. It has a range of 18 to 135 uh, as far as the zoom goes. It has image stabilization on it. Uh, great autofocusing capability with this body. It's been designed to work specifically with the 90D camera body. And so it's able to communicate very well. The camera body can adjust for any lens aberration that this might cause. And so there's, there's a lot of benefits to uh, working with the kit lens that comes with the 90D. It, it will allow you the opportunity to learn a lot of things and um, become better at photography with all of the options that come with it. And it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, this particular lens that I've popped on here, this L lens, EF mount, is worth about twice as much as this body itself and so when you're just getting started you might not have the budget to go out and, and buy some of these expensive prime lenses and uh, it's uh, very nice that Canon has allowed you the opportunity to get started with a very good lens uh, at a very low price. Let's maybe pop this lens back on as we mentioned this is an EF mount and that goes with the red ring and the red dot Let's press our little lever here, turn it counterclockwise, put our, um, and this is, if you look at the lens itself, it's called the EFS lens, and that goes with the white dot, or the white square, and the white marking here, and it's clicked in. Let's put our protective lens cap on the back here. Now, if you do decide to go the route uh, with getting this kit lens, like I recommended, I would also recommend that you pick up at least a 50 millimeter lens from Canon. And uh, the reason is, is because they are fairly inexpensive. I believe this 50 millimeter lens is running in right around $130 maybe even less in some situations. So it doesn't cost that much more to add to your kit. And yet this will give you the option of um, having a much wider range of what we call aperture or f-stops. This particular um, lens is uh, goes down to 1.8 f-stop or aperture. Whereas the kit lens, it... Uh, is actually a range. Um, if you take the lens cap off and look at the uh, lens itself, or the outer ring gives you the range of f-stops that are capable with this kit lens. You'll notice that it says 3.5 to 5.6. Now it's important to note that that does not mean that that is the only range of f-stops that you get with this lens. Um, it does actually go all the way up to f-stop 22. Um, and if you're not familiar with what f-stop means in aperture, let's put a little uh, diagram up on the screen here and show you the different uh, f-stops. What it refers to is the lens opening, how big or small the lens opening is going to be and how much light it's going to allow into the camera. So if you're in a very... Um, dark situation you want to be able to open that up to allow more light to come in and hit the sensor of the camera if you're out on a very bright sunny day you want to close that lens opening way down um, to be able to prevent too much light from hitting the sensor it's a little bit confusing i know because the higher the number 
the smaller the hole that lets light come in to the sensor of the camera. And so the higher the aperture, the smaller the hole. And the lower the aperture, the wider the opening, letting more light in. The other reason why f-stops are important is not just about how much light comes into the camera um, and whether you can film or take photographs in dark situations. Uh, it also refers to uh, that beautiful Boku effect. You know what I'm talking about? It's one of the reasons why people want to move away from filming with their iPhone, right? Or their smartphone. Let's say you've been working with a GoPro, for example. In that case, everything is in focus all the time. And so if you've been doing your YouTube channel just using an action camera like the GoPro or, or phones, it's probably one of the reasons why you have wanted to step up to a, a little better camera so that you can have the opportunity to have that beautiful Boku effect where the background is out of focus while the foreground of the subject is in perfect focus. And having a lens that has the ability to uh, have a lower f-stop like you get with the 50 millimeter lens is going to give you much more opportunity to do that. It's not to say that this lens can't do it. Uh, I've done some experimenting with this lens out in the field over the last few days and I have found that if you set it up right you can get a nice boku even with this lens, even though it is 3.5 to 5.6. Now, I think I might have started to say that's, that's not the only range. It does go up to f-stop 22. What that's referring to is your range of lowest aperture uh, that you can get with this lens. And what they're talking about, it's not always clear. Uh, what they're talking about is when the lens is completely out wide at 18 millimeters, you will be able to go down to an f-stop of 3.5. But as you uh, zoom into your subject, uh, when you especially get to the end, all you're going to be able to do is go down to 5.6. Normally I would say it's, it's difficult to get a nice Boku effect when you can only go down to 5.6. But if you set your subject up right, you are able to actually get a fairly nice boku. I'm going to put up a series of still photographs that I took of my daughter yesterday out in the forest and uh, I wanted to see what the possibility of a nice boku was with this kit lens and I have to say I was impressed. I, I did a series of four shots where I started out completely wide at 18 millimeter and I set it down to you know the lowest uh, aperture at 3.5 that this lens does and then as I increased the focal length and zoomed in to her I took another one went in a little bit closer took another one and went in fully and took the last one and I noticed that it had automatically changed to 5.6 aperture and yet take a look at the Boku behind her it uh, is actually pretty impressive even at the 5.6 but that's going to depend on where you have positioned your subject uh, in comparison to where you're standing and um, the background behind her. If I had would have had her up against a tree with leaves very close to her, then we probably wouldn't have got this. But because I positioned her where the trees in the background were quite a distance behind her, we were still able to get a nice boku, even at 5.6. However, this is why I recommend that you get uh, pick up a, a 50 millimeter lens because this, for just $130, allows you the opportunity to go right down to 1.8. And in fact, that's probably too low uh, when you're wanting to uh, take especially video because if you're doing an interview, and that's where I would use this the most, when you've got it down to 1.8, if your subject moves just a little bit, uh, they can go out of focus briefly. Or what can happen is the camera can focus in on the nose and the eyes can be out of focus when you're right down to 1.8. Some lenses go down to 1.2. And so you have to be very careful. I usually don't go past uh, 2.8 when I'm doing an interview for an f-stop. And that allows 
me to keep the subject in focus, even if they are rocking back and forth a little bit. I have to say that that's one of the reasons why I work with Canon cameras is because, uh, especially with the latest lenses and the latest equipment, the uh, Canon 90D as well, uh, when your interviewee rocks back and forth, it does a pretty good job of following that and keeping them in focus, even though they rock back and forth. Try and tell them to sit as still as possible as they're giving their answers. But sometimes when people are talking and they're thinking and they're wanting to give their, act, uh, the, their answer, they just can hardly stop themselves from uh, having that little bit of motion. And uh, so it's good to have the Canon equipment for that. All right, those were some of the main things that I wanted to share with you about lenses in this lesson. Uh, cleaning the lens, a lot of people, when they first start using a camera, if they look at the lens and see that there's some dust or dirt on that, they might just take their shirt and clean the lens, and that's not a good idea. Uh, most shirts are uh, made of material that is just too rough and can actually scratch the lens of the camera. So it's important to pick up lens cleaning cloths. You can get them at uh, your optometrist or at a camera store. Pick up a bunch of them, have them in your bag, and uh, that way when you're cleaning your lenses you're using a soft cloth to uh, protect the lens of your camera and still get all the dust off. I recommend uh, every morning before you go out for your shoot, uh, clean your lenses. Maybe even halfway through the day, if you're in a dusty environment, you might want to check your lenses again and uh, do that cleaning as well. Uh, maybe one more thing that we could point out is that um, there are different kinds of lenses. This one is a zoom lens, and there's what's called a prime lens. And when we say prime lens, that means it's just one focal length. This is an 85 millimeter. And so it doesn't have the ability to zoom in on your subject. Um, and a lot of people find that frustrating the first time that they work with a prime lens. They, and my wife especially say, but it doesn't zoom. And I say, well, yeah, it zooms. And she says, well, I can't get it to zoom. I say, let me show you how. So I'll take the camera and I'll say, okay, now when I want to zoom in to my subject, I just walk forward five steps. And if I want to zoom out, I, I walk back five steps. That's how you zoom with a prime lens. And uh, it takes a little extra effort, a little getting used to a prime lens, not having that ability to zoom. But the advantage of a prime lens is that for the same amount of money, um, a lot more goes into the glass, high quality glass, and um, a higher or a wider aperture range. This particular prime lens, I think, goes down to 1.8. Oh, 1.4. <laughs> and so if you want to have those amazing shots where the eye is perfectly in focus, but the ear may not be, <laughs> uh, well, this gives you the ability to do that go right down to 1.4 and uh, so uh, if you're shopping for lenses I would say if you're new to photography um, sit down uh, with the salesperson at your favorite camera store and have them talk uh, to you about what you're interested in what your needs are and your budget and uh, they'll help you pick out the best uh, lenses for your purpose uh, I really like this lens. It's a 70 to 200, and it will go right down to 2.8, which is about as low as I usually want to go ever, and so that works out well. I even sometimes use this for a video interview. Uh, it depends on the type of audio uh, equipment that you have, whether that works or not, uh, but it uh, gives a very beautiful still image. That's where I'll use this lens the most, is doing still photography. And uh, especially when I'm taking shots of people, I can be discreet. I can be back quite a ways uh, and capture that, capture those moments without the subject being nervous about a camera being in their face. All right. Well, I think that that does it for lenses. Just let me think for a moment to see if there's anything we missed. Yes, there is something. Um, you'll notice 
that the kit lens has uh, some options on it. One is uh, to have it on autofocus or manual focus. Uh, with the Canon equipment, you very rarely would need to use the manual focus, but it's good to know that it's there in case you are struggling in a low light situation uh, and, and the camera is struggling to focus. You have the ability to set that to uh, manual focus so that it's not zooming in, hunting and pecking for a, uh, a focus. And then, especially if you're shooting video, you'll need to learn how to um, be able to put on magnification to go in and get your focus um, clearly in a manual environment. And uh, then you'll have your subject in focus. Uh, but for the most part, you can just leave that on autofocus, AF, and you'll be good to go. The next one down is called stabilizer. And I like to have this on for the most part doesn't matter whether I'm taking still photography or video, having the stabilizer on will help you get better shots, better steady shots without shake. Uh, for still shots and uh, for video without um, having those annoying uh, bouncy looks in your video. Um, it will compensate for your movement uh, with your hands. When you're taking still photography, um, it helps avoid lens blur or motion blur. Uh, and what can happen is just taking a, just pressing down on the shutter of your camera can move your lens just enough that uh, it will cause your shot to have that motion blur. And having your image stabilization on will help with that. Now, you might wonder, well, when would I ever want to turn the stabilizer off? Well, if you're doing an interview and you've got your camera on a tripod, a lot of people say it's better to turn the stabilizer off, that the stabilization mechanism inside the lens itself isn't going to be worrying around, trying to keep that camera stable and steady when it's not necessary because it's on a tripod. And the last lever there is a lock. And what that simply does is lock the lens so it uh, can't zoom in and out. All right, well, I believe that that does it for what I wanted to share with you about lenses. Uh, next time, we'll start taking a look at uh, the menu settings of the 90D. See you then.